Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is August 1st, 2019. And you know what? I've spotted a very disturbing trend. Uh, yesterday, when the Fed cut interest rates by 25 basis points, uh, we no I noticed the dollar gained significant uh, strength on the U.S. dollar index. It, it went up. And uh, also, I noticed that gold and silver, uh, uh, they, they suffered. They suffered back. And uh, also, uh, cryptocurrency now went up, too. But this is a very disturbing trend. And the reason why is, is you normally, you know, if you cut interest rates, normally the dollar's supposed to go down a little bit, you know. <clears throat> and... Uh, Gold and silver should go up a little bit. <laughs> this is the opposite. And uh, I'll tell you the reason why it's happening this way is investors are the, the investors are, are a fickle bunch. I, I'm going to tell you, they the direction that they turn sometimes doesn't always agree with logic. You know, and right now what's actually happening is, is they're getting nervous. They see the world economy, that the Fed is moving from a position right now of where they were cornered into a position where they're losing control. And also the world economy is starting to slide down a slippy slope. And this is the reason why they're cutting in the first place. If the economy was so strong and everything was so rosy and good, they wouldn't be cutting interest rates. Uh, and, and this is a very disturbing trend for the holders of gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies. This trend I see developing. And it could affect cryptocurrencies the worst. Cryptocurrencies could take... And, and it, I, this is a, is a move, this investor sentiment, turning to the dollar... As as the safe haven, and right now, see they're they're very afraid. Picture if you're an investor, the, if if they're a really smart investor and they see which way all of this is going, how the Fed's starting to lose control, how the world's economy is starting to slip into a recession, and that the markets are starting to turn over a little bit because of the nervousness of all this, and the whole situation, the whole uh, dynamic situation of the economy. And they see that fear. They're thinking, "I'm getting in dollars. I'm get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold dollars." And that that's that's the mentality, you know. But that's the worst place that they can run. But they that doesn't always make sense. When people get frightened, they don't always do what makes sense. People will run into a burning fire. Quite literally, it doesn't always make sense. But for me, this is a disturbing trend. And I want to see if it actually continues this way in the future. On oh, the next rate cut, we'll see it might, if this trend continues. Because it's a disturbing trend for the holders of gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies. But it is a trend that is limited. Because when it really starts to turn over, everything really starts to turn over, then they'll run out of dollars. So what I'm thinking is they'll run in. And then later, run out as fast as they can. You know what I mean? And then where do they turn? Well, there's no place left. It's kind of like a bunch of animals being herded or something. And they're going the wrong direction until finally in the end they all go into the correct spot. And this is the way it works with this. Is is This is a temporary phenomenon. But it could continue on these successive rate hikes. And it actually could get worse. And this is what I'm keeping my eye on. But I found it very disturbing yesterday that they ran so heavily into the dollar. Okay, so let's get the market started. Let's open up the charts right here. And let's take a look at the silver price. And this, we see what happened to it. It was up on these two higher lines, which represents the two last days we had. The blue line and the red line. And look how far it's fell back down, the silver price. Uh, because of uh, them running into the dollar uh, and nervousness over the Fed rate cut. Now, see, that's not normal. Fed cuts rates. The dollar should weaken. You know, gold and silver should go up. 
uh, cryptocurrency did go up, but uh, this could be a temporary phenomenon as well. Uh, uh, cryptocurrency, you know, is going to be very vulnerable to this. To them running into the dollar. Cryptocurrency could be very vulnerable to this. Much more vulnerable than gold and, sil gold and silver. I'll tell you how vulnerable. It costs $4,000 to mine a Bitcoin, right? So that's the mining production cost. 4000 bucks. okay? Now, take into consideration the mining production cost of, a, of an ounce of gold. It's like it's like eleven hundred bucks. You know what I mean? So if you put that in as a limitation, you know Bitcoin could get more than cut in half because of the mining production cost. It's only four thousand bucks. Bitcoin's riding up there over ten thousand dollars. You know, where gold, gold, uh, eleven hundred dollars mining production cost. You know, it's it's got that not that much room. It's only up around. Uh, well, let's see what gold is this morning right now. 1403 so it's 1400 bucks more or less and it could drop down to about 11 if things were to really if the wheels the cogs in this machine of a of an economy were to all of a sudden grind to a stop you know go into a terrible recession and everything and everything become bearish super bearish and they run into the dollar uh, this is the limitations but this is very disturbing I don't think it's going to go down to that but It'd be a very short period of time. We went through the same deal. The same deal occurred during the last recession, the, what they call the Great Recession of 2008. The same deal occurred. Gold and silver got smashed. Of course, Bitcoin wasn't really around yet, you know, and gold and silver got smashed down just before the price of silver went to 50 bucks and just before the price of gold went all the way up to 1900 But before that happened, they got smashed down. During that little period when they run into the dollar. They get scared and they run into the dollar. And I'm worried that might happen again. That's just what's worrying me. You know? Uh, so we're looking at 1403 for gold and silver today. We're looking at, uh, uh, 1598. Uh, and, and they, that's, it's down. It's down. But I think it's gonna bounce back as, uh, as the weeks progress here. I think it's gonna bounce back a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies is the one I'm biggest, the most worried about in this. More than gold and silver because uh, the reason why is, is because the mining production cost of, of Bitcoin is much cheaper than an, an ounce of gold in percentage wise. Okay, so $1,100 mining production cost for gold and it sells for 14 That's only a $300 difference there. And that in percentage wise... Bitcoin, 4,000 mining production costs, and we're looking at a price this morning of over $10,000. So, so Bitcoin could get trimmed back an awful lot worse. It's an awful lot more, it's got a lot more to lose, in other words, is what I'm saying, you know. So it's more dangerous. But then again, on the other side, Bitcoin has a much higher upside potential, you know. It's awful hard right now in this environment. Capital is searching for a home, and for small-time investors, it's awful hard right now. Where do you put your money? What's what's safe right now? Is long-term bonds a safe play? Is <clears throat> is equities in the stock market a safe play? Is cryptocurrency a safe play? Is gold and silver a safe play in this kind of environment? This is why investors are, are holding into dollars, or running into the dollar. They're looking at that as a safe play. It, it's it's all in, and, and everybody wants yield right now. It, this environment is really tough. Let's take a look now at the Dow Jones. And we'll refresh the page and take a look at today's Dow Jones market. <coughs> 31 points up on the day. Uh, yesterday we had a decline of over 333 points uh, on a, a cut. And there's another thing. It, we're really we are in uncharted territory and we are in bizarro land right now. They cut rates and, and the market falls. Doesn't that tell you we're in bizarro territory? Uh, let's take a look now at uh, the crude oil price, 57.67. 
it's uh, down 91 cents on the day, 1.55%, but it's rising right now. So it's making up some of its losses. Let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries right now and see what they're doing. Uh, bring the chart down. Uh, what we're looking at is the short end of the yield curve rising and the long end falling. It's more of a yield curve inversion. You know, it's heading more toward the yield curve inversion, but... These these rates are awfully low. We've had we've had a real boom in the bond market. You know, uh, investors have been going crazy over the bond market. I'm worried there could be a huge snapback in this, and yields could rise a lot, a lot. You know, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Now, here is the biggest mover and shaker today in the markets. It really went up. Uh, it's it's getting up near a hundred. 98.82, you know, if we go back uh, and we take a look at the five day here, we can see this pop in the dollar, you know, and uh, this is what's affected the gold and silver price. But, uh, ultimately, in the end, the dollar is going to die. But before it dies, it reminds me of something that Jim Willie's always said for years. He said the dollar is going to go up and up and up and up and up and that's going to die. You know, and the reason for that would be investors pour into the dollar as a safe haven, trying to trying to hold, hang on to liquidity, and try it, knowing that they can they can do something with that. In other words, they they pile into that liquidity, they're hanging on to it like dry powder that they can spend, and and they're waiting to see what happens. You know, and they all pour into the dollar because of this fear of investing in anything else, because. This mar market uncertainty out there it, that's being generated with the Fed losing control. That we've went through all the stage now of the Fed uh, being cornered. Now they're dropping rates. They're starting to lose control. They're losing control of the situation. Uh, there's only one game left for the Fed once they really lose control of the economy. They're going to have to basically resort to uh, buying everything themselves. <laughs> They're the lender. <clears throat> the Fed is the lender of rat last resort, and the government is the borrower of last resort. And between them two, you create a loop, a money creation loop, that uh, once it really gets going, it'll just destroy the, the value of the dollar. But they don't realize that. They're going to run into it. Anyway, let's take a look at India. India has lost a million jobs. <laughs> India's turning over. It says Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi faces several challenges in stimulating a faltering economy as his second term begins. A global synchronized industrial slowdown has hit the Indian automobile and technical sector somewhat hard, resulting in over a million job cuts in the last several years. And it's it's still happening. The Indian 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 economy is 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 turning over along with China. In fact, the whole world's turning down right now, um, and there's going to be no stopping this. This is something that's so big, so the whole world's involved, and it's gaining momentum or traction. And uh, it's just a matter of time now at this point. Uh, as the world turns downwards, the economies, the United States is the last bastion that's kind of holding a little bit of a relatively good economy. It's, it's not great, but it's it's better than all these other countries that are turning downwards rather sharply. Uh, listen, thank you guys for listening to this report, and we'll catch you again uh, very, very soon, and give me a thumbs up. Bye-bye, guys.